Hi, welcome to XLF video tutorials. In this video, we'll continue to demonstrate the use of BVSolve for solving stiff boundary value problems. Uh, in this video, we will address more features of BVSolve for dealing with more complex problems, uh, problems with conversions difficulty, and so forth. I'm looking at uh, one example here of a stiff problem, second order system. As you can see, it, uh, it's nonlinear and it also involves division by y uh, in the range of 0 to 1 with the following bounding conditions. Uh, the first step to uh, solve this kind of problem is to uh, write it as a set of first order equations. So the transformation again is straightforward. We introduce a variable z uh, equal to y prime dy over dx and then we define y double prime in terms of z which is dz over dx and make the necessary substitution in the equation for y prime which is z. Again notice in this example the transformation does not affect the boundary conditions because the y remains intact in this conversion. conversion. Suppose for example we had boundary conditions in terms of y prime then that boundary condition would have to be defined for z instead. Let's move to Excel and see how we can solve this system using BVSolve. So starting with the uh, first order equations I've already written down the uh, right hand side formulas. The first formula for dy dx is equal to z1. I've chosen my variables to be x1 for the independent variable x, y1 for y, and z1 for z. Uh, my equation for dz over dx is uh, specified here and I'm taking advantage of two additional cells a1 and a2 to define the uh, function a of x 1 plus x square and its derivative a prime which is 2x. So as you can see here in the formula I reference, wherever I reference a prime here I reference a2 and wherever I reference a of x I reference a1. I also used e1 to hold epsilon and I've given it the value of 0.01 to make this the system highly stiff. My body points are defined in column D, 14 to 15, 0 and 1, I have only two points. Uh, the corresponding formulas are defined in column E. At x equals 0, we have the boundary condition y1 equal 0.9129, and that translates to equal y1 minus 0.9129. Similarly, at x equal 1, we have the condition y1 equal 0.375, which translates to the formula y1 minus 0.375. We are ready to run BV solve now, so I'm going to allocate a th uh, an array. Uh, we have three variables, so I need three columns, and I'm going to use about 22, 23. Again, it's optional. I can use as many as I like and customize the output as well. Uh, I'm entering my BV solve formula. My first argument is the system formulas. My second argument is the system variables and I have to specify in the following order the independent variable first followed by the differential variables y1 and z1. That order must respect the order we've entered the, the, equa the system which is y first and z second. My third argument is the body points and my fourth argument is the body conditions and my fifth argument is the domain which is from one from zero to one and again I'm going to uh, use one of the optional solver settings for reporting global error estimates so I'm going to skip over six argument and seven argument and jump to the eighth argument where I can specify the key and uh, give it a value of true so the solver would report for us the error estimates at the uh, last row. I'm again using a, a constant array for passing this parameter. Now I press Control shift enter to run the solver and we get a warning. There are two types of messages from the solvers, either warnings or errors. Warnings are just information that we can generally um, you know, ignore or correct if we like, but they are not fatal. In this case, the solver is informing us that uh, our initial guess for the variables y1 and z1 do not satisfy the boundary conditions. Obviously this is a nonlinear solver and it, it needs to start from some initial guess for the solution and that initial guess is you have the option to specify it in the variables, y, the differential variables y1 and z1 to aid the solver to converge. 
Generally, we start from zero. Uh, we, uh, if we don't have a good initial guess, and the solver was, will uh, converge from that point on. But sometimes it's difficult for the solver, and we might have to specify a good initial guess to help it solve the problem. This is just really information for us, because obviously zero does not satisfy this equation, uh, nor this equation. However, we can just simply ignore it in this case. So I'm going to retry to ignore that warning. Now we get a fatal error. It's complaining that uh, while processing argument number one, it's encountering a division by zero. And that is expected. As we see here, we have division by y in the formula. And uh, obviously uh, we are starting from an initial guess of zero for y, and that's uh, upsetting the solver. So to correct this problem, all we have to do is start from an unzero initial guess for y, and that's as simple as that. Now, in general, you have you can specify a constant value, or you can specify uh, a formula as a function of the uh, spatial variable x. So, for example, in general, if you think that the initial guess uh, looks more like a sine function, then you might want to specify the initial guess as sine of x1, for example. In this case, it suffices just to give a constant value. I'm just going to go to jump to y1 and uh, give the value 1. Again, 1 does not satisfy both uh, boundary conditions, uh, but again, we can ign ignore this. Uh, notice that uh, Excel ran the solver automatically for us because when we are on auto calculation mode and by changing one cell Excel recomputes re the rest of the cells in the sheet. So I'm just going to ignore this and say retry. And the solver completes and computes the solution for us without any further problems. As we can see here the uh, global errors are fairly uh, good. We have good convergence here for the variables. We can try to plot the solution. Uh, we want to exclude the relative errors from the plot. I'm going to insert a scatter with a smooth curve. We can choose a different scale for y1. And now we have a better feel for the solution, which is, uh, as you can see, it's a very stiff problem. This really concludes that example. The points to keep in mind here is on difficult problems you may want to think about your initial guess for the solver and you specify the initial guess in the, as formulas in the uh, differential variables that you have chosen for your system. In general you can just start from zero and not have to worry about this but for more complex problems you, you want to pay attention to the initial guess. There are more interesting problems in the examples if we go back to the uh, web page here um, under examples. Uh, I have included several examples and they are available. Let me just zoom out a little bit here. They are available al also in the workbooks where you can run them dynamically. So uh, for example, uh, uh, this is an example for a fourth order system which is a cantilever beam. There is also an example for a differential algebraic system where it, you have a, a, an algebraic constraint and uh, the solution is demonstrated in the example. Uh, so you may want to take a look at the examples. Thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you again.